Hello friends, this is a video of laparoscopic TAPP mesh repair for primedium lichal hernia. We start by creating pneumoperitoneum from Palmer's point and after achieving pneumoperitoneum, we make a marking approximately 7.5 cm all around the hernia defect. And then we place boards onto the left side as laterally as possible under vision. Under external guidance, we make tattoos onto the peritoneal surface along the intended line of incision. We start the incision at the level of umbilicus and use a Maryland guitar in our left hand and a hook or a scissor in our right hand. This incision proceeds cranially and cordially first before progressing medially. This is a minimally edited video on 2x speed to give a better perspective and procedure and understanding. Now, initial part of the dissection is more challenging because away from midline peritoneum is more thinner as compared to the midline. So in more difficult cases where you feel that the peritoneum is super thin, a scissor can be used in place of hook. To a better dissection, we try to keep the path camera as close to the area of dissection as possible. So the camera person or the assistant should be well trained and should understand the anatomy of the plane in which we are walking. Now, as I progress further and start reaching towards the midline, you can see the fatty area there, I have changed my instrument from a hook to a chisel with the help of which at times I can divide sharply as well as I can use an energy. I have also changed my left hand instrument from a Maryland forcep to a bowel grasper to prevent any kind of injury to the peritoneum and avoid any butterfly. As we approach the fatty area towards the midline, the plane becomes much better and the dissection becomes much easier. So the idea here is to remain close and flush to posterior to sheet and linear alba rather than being towards the peritoneal surface. we start approaching the midline, we need to appreciate and identify the area in which we need to dissect. As if you go into the wrong plane and injure linear alba, it can lead to further hernia formation. Dissection cranially is always more challenging than cordially. So you can use a scissor if you feel the peritoneum is too thick and buttonholes can happen. And be very slow and gentle with the dissection using just optimum amount of blunt forces cranially pushing the PRS away from peritoneum and dividing and using scissors wherever required. in a very challenging place where you need to be very slow and gentle because you can see here the peritoneum is very thin. So I am doing very slow and very gentle movements with soft hands so that we don't cause any kind of inadvertent button here. We always do the dissection on either side of the hernia defect before approaching onto the hernia defect. Here you can see we are using sharp and blunt forces to dissect all around the hernia defect. While we are working on the hernia defect, we push the pseudo sac up as hernial sac is dissected down.
In the process, immense care should be taken to ensure that umbilical skin is not injured during this section. Once we have completely taken down the hernial sac, we move our dissection onto the contralateral side. When we start working onto the right side, away from us, I usually prefer changing again my instrument from a sharp scissor to a spatula. At times, we have encountered inadvertent injuries or buttonholes onto the peritoneum due to scissors in our right hand. And spatula gives us a better control at the same time serves the purpose. Now, this dissection continues further guided by compression from external markings. In the time, we create good amount of space all around to place a decent sized mesh. Again, I would say a difficult place to work as we are moving away from midline and the peritoneum is again becoming very thin here. And here we are taking on the facial transfer cellulose fibers and keeping onto the peritoneal surface. But sometimes it is very difficult. And what we can do is we can just graze along the posterior of the sheet. And you can use some blood dissection also here. As you can see the swiping movement here. We also call it swimming maneuver. section has to be guided by external compressive forces and whenever you feel that you have done the dissection optimally just dissect for a few millimeters or a centimeter more to place the mesh in a perfect try to recruit as much tissue as possible onto the peritoneal side to make a thick healthy flap. completed our dissection process and we are just ensuring that we have made and raised the flap completely by pressing from external markings that is all around 7.5 cm around the hernia defect. We are using 
part non observable number one sutures here 15 cm in length to close the hernia defect try to incorporate some portion of pseudo sac while taking these bites but at times when we feel that the skin is too thinned out and it might cause some puckering of the skin we leave to take pseudo sacs there also we do not reduce the pressures while closing this defect but we reduce the pressure once we have taken few bites and we are approximating the sutures so what we do is we take a couple of bites or a few winds first and then after taking 3 4 winds then we pull the suture completely to close the hernia defect Normally, we use soft macroporous mesh for primary ventral hernias, like in this case. And here, I have taken a 15 into 15 centimeter soft mesh, and cranio cordially, I have kept it 15 centimeters, while transversely, I have trimmed it for 2 centimeters. So, the effective size of the mesh used here is 15 by 13 centimeters. It is all about optimal space creation, and if you have created good amount of space, then you can place the mesh perfectly fine. I have used four point fixation with the help of tackers in this case, but normally we do not use any kind of fixation. Now it's a matter of personal choice, and at times four point suturing or tacker. or transversal sutures can be used but we believe that it has least chances of mesh migration as it is a closed space this is a female patient with a short stature so our line of incision is pretty close to our pores therefore this case was slightly difficult from the point of view of suturing i would say because the ports were very close to our camera ports and the vision was difficult again an important role of camera person here we have used a barbed 30 absorbable sutures 15 cm in length here for closer of the flap not tightened the suture or pulled it after every bite a small trick that you take a couple of bites and then you try to pull the suture this also helps in force distribution and creation of any kind of button holes or to the peritoneum while closer of the flap once we have closed the flap completely we take a look back at the flap to ensure that there is no gaping then we take a 
couple of bite backwards before cutting the suture flush to peritoneum. This concludes the surgery. Thank you for watching. Thank you.